Hi, Rachel. Great to see you again. Um, you know, I you've been leading uh, a team within government for about a year and a, a bit now. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of background and uh, how things going. Thanks for inviting me, Brian. Um, so I'm the executive director of Forest Sector Transformation for the Ministry of Forests. Uh, I live in beautiful Kamloops, which is in the heart of Sequatmec Territory. And so my role and the role of my team is to support and guide the transformation of the forest sector uh, with a real focus on making sure that we get the most value that we can from the trees we harvest. Uh, and so by value, we mean jobs, we mean revenue, we mean in investment in the province, for communities, for families, for businesses. And we know that the future looks different than it looks today. We want diversity in our manufacturing facilities. So both we need we need those large facilities and we really need those small and medium sized manufacturers producing a variety of wood products in communities all across the province. Right. That's that's what we're looking for. And so my team, which started about a year ago, brand new team in government hardly ever happens. So that's the value added sector strategies branch is dedicated to supporting this transition. And um, and, you know, so it's it's been a year you've had a, a, a team and, a, you know, I know um, uh, and work with them closely. You're you're happy with the progress that you've been making so far with uh, with that group? Well, that's a very tricky question. I'm very proud of the work we've done. I think that we're working really well with your organization. Um, I'm excited to talk a little bit more about the Value Added Accelerators Initiative. Um, so I'm proud of that work. Um, and I believe we need to do more and we need to do more faster. So I, I hesitate to say I'm entirely happy because I think there's more that we can do and more that we need to do. Great answer. By um, you had a few questions about uh, a little more detail around the uh, around the the program and uh, the value added accelerator uh, activities. Yes, absolutely. So my first question for you, Rachel, is what is the government doing to support value added manufacturing right now? Oh, okay. Uh, well, there's a there's a number of things that have happened over the last few years to support uh, value added manufacturers and the the work to have more value added manufacturing in the province. And so some of those things I think you've um, have already covered with folks, but I'll just hit them at a high level um, in no particular order. We have the new BC Timber Sales Category 4 value added manufacturing program. And so that program um, is brand new, just uh, was announced a little over a year ago and launched legally and formally uh, just I think in January. And the goal of that program is to provide a dedicated supply of open market access to fiber for value added manufacturers. And so there's a lot of work right now to get folks registered, value added manufacturers registered in the system. Um, and for the local BC timber sales uh, teams to get to know their registrants so that they can start designing sales which are tailored to their unique needs. So all of that is scaling up right now. Um, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, there has been changes to the manufactured forest products regulation. So the manufacturers forest, manufactured forest products regulation uh, regulates the export of minimally processed cedar and cypress, was originally on the coast and I should know all the dates, but sometime in the last six months, uh, that regulation was updated uh, to apply provincially to those two species. Further, there was some changes made, uh, I think, to the Finance Act, possibly the Ministry of Forest Act, to ensure that there was a better ability for auditing um, and auditing to make sure that that regu regulation is being implemented as it was supposed to. Auditing and, um, you know, monitoring and compliance. Oversight. Authority. Oversight. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, there's been a bunch of new funding made available through the Manufacturing Jobs Fund. So $180 million uh, over two years. So we're sort of coming close to the end of that two years to support manufacturers throughout the province in upgrading their facilities. Um, applies to all manufacturers, but there's real priority on uh, forest dependent projects that support forest dependent communities, wood processing. Uh, projects that have First Nations partnerships and it you know early 
early analysis of that program shows that, you know, with the investment so far, we've leveraged because it provides partial capital investment. Um, we've leveraged something like five hundred and fifty million dollars of new investment into wood products manufacturing in the province, which is pretty amazing. There's also the rural uh, red IP, um, which is the rural economic development and, and investment program. So uh, provides investment dollars to communities, First Nations communities, uh, other local communities for the, for a whole variety of things, but can be for manufacturing. There's the um, ministry has the Innovation Bioeconomy and Indigenous Opportunities Branch and the four or the Indigenous Opportunities Program. Um, bioeconomy program. So it provides funding for First Nations communities to um, develop any kind of bioeconomy and value added kind of opportunities. So lots of investment there and other opportunities for to support communities, First Nations manufacturers getting into bioproducts and mass timber. So there's a bunch of money on the table and I think you can kind of see some of that stuff on the poster behind me. Uh, money available uh, to support manufacturers in investing and growing in innovative opportunities. Uh, we also have government has provided, I think, $60 million over a couple of years, uh, uplifted into the Forest Enhancement Society of BC funding. Um, and that program provides uh, money to support forest licensees to get more fiber um, in low value stands. So it's helping with getting low value fiber out of wildfire areas and other areas. So that's increasing the amount of fiber that's available in the system. Because we know right now, one of the challenges that uh, manufacturers at all levels, primary manufacturers, secondary, is getting access to the fiber that they need in order to produce the products that they produce so that we can you know, continue leveraging opportunities to move things up the value chain and add margin. Uh, and then, of course, there's a bunch of work underway to make sure that the administrative processes related to wildfire, post-wildfire salvage um, are as efficient as possible so that we can expedite um, the ability, the post-wildfire salvage, to make sure that we're getting the most value out of those burned trees before they degrade so that post-wildfire salvage can really play an important part in supporting manufacturers, but also in helping support community economic recovery after a wildfire. So those are just some of the things. That, uh, Rachel, that sounds like a great start. Um, we've had conversations about this concept of continuous improvement and and I think uh, that's a, a tremendous um, part of this this whole process. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about uh, you know in that context the 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 uh, Category Four program, um, which I would say is a great start, um, but needs to uh, grow and expand. So maybe um, explain a little bit within uh within a few minutes just on that idea of continuous uh, improvement and 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 um how you're looking particularly at that uh bcts cat 4 program as a, a place to to uh look for that continuous improvement yeah you bet thanks for that um so the the cat 4 value-added manufacturing program uh, was launched, as I said, was announced over a year ago, was formally launched or legally launched in January. Um, and so BC Timber Sales staff are working hard to implement the program as it was designed. But as with anything that we do, you know, government, anyone else, you never get it totally right the first time. So you want to get things out into the system and then you want to work with the people who are using the program to continually make it better. Um, and so one of the things, of course, like the minute the program was launched, there was the recognition, there's lots of feedback from, from BC Wood members and from uh, Value Added Wood Coalition and others that, you know, great start, but 100 and what, whatever the, the apportionment is, currently the size of that program um, is not sufficient to meet the need of value added manufacturers. And so government has recognized that. And I think the commitment is to work to try and increase the size of that program so that there's more val or more volume available um, to, to distribute through that program to value added manufacturers. So that work is underway. In terms of continuous improvement, 
you know, for those of us in forestry and probably other places, it's a very formal process. You know, you launch something. I think it's actually also some people call it an agile process. You launch something, you get it out into the world, you monitor how it's, you know, how are we implementing it? Are we implementing it the way we're supposed to? That's implementation monitoring. Um, by implementing it the way we're supposed to, is it effective? So that's effectiveness monitoring. Is it getting the results we're looking for? And then we can make recommendations on how would we improve it so that we are better meeting the goals of whatever that program was. We implement, you know, decide which are the right recommendations to move forward with. We implement those. We go back to the start. We, you know, and then we start again. We monitor are those changes doing what we wanted? Um, and through that and working together, we're going to continue building that program in a really good way. And I think I mentioned before, one of the things um, that BC Timber Sales is working on, I think that will make a really big difference in the effectiveness of the program, is they're starting these committees, local committees with their registrants to make sure that they have a strong relationship with their registrants, understand what their registrants need, and are able to start designing sales that meet those needs because they're very different. Those requirements are very different than, say, a major licensee in the regular Beast Timber Sales Cat 1 program. Does that Great. answer your question? Yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's super. Um, maybe one other question. You had mentioned uh, earlier the value-added accelerator um, process. And I've been part of that, uh, the, those groups and discussions, but maybe just explain a little bit more and, and expound on uh, the progress that's made on, on, on that front. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I am a real believer in the power of collaboration and working together. So I've been very passionate about the value added accelerators. Um, and so the value added accelerators are a partnership um, as we've talked about. So with the BC, the four partners. First of all, the BC Value Added Wood Coalition, which of course um, is a, a coalition including BC Wood, so all of you, uh, the ILMA, so the Interior Lumber Manufacturers Association, the IWPA, so the in, uh, Independent Wood Processors Association, so BC Value Added Wood Coalition. Secondly, COFI, so the Council of Forest Industries. Uh, thirdly, the First Nations Forestry Council. And then finally, last but not least, the Ministry of Forests, and that includes BC Timber Sales. So we're all working, this isn't a government-led initiative, we're all working together as equal partners to move the work forward. Um, and it started, you know, the work sort of started a, a year and a half ago, I think after after Kofi, so April of 2022, uh, the Minister, Minister Conroy, so the then Minister of Forests, challenged the uh, forest sector to get together and work out some solutions to grow value-added manufacturing. And I think that work progressed for a while. And around the time of Kofi, so around the Kofi Convention, so April of 2023, so just a little over a year ago, um, there was the opportunity, supported by the Premier, for the province to get involved and support that work. And, and we also you know, felt it was important to have the First Nations Forestry Council uh, there as a partner as well. So we all decided to get together as partners and work together on developing solutions to support, maintain and grow value added manufacturing in the province. One with a focus on the flow of fiber that's needed by value added manufacturers, so that's logs and lumber, to sustain and grow operations. So that's really been uh, the focus of the work. We the, the initial idea was to start some regional tables to bring local people together, and that is still a, a focus of the work. Um, through the fall and winter of last year, we hosted engagement sessions, so some virtual engagement sessions and some face-to-face -face sessions, so maybe uh, some of your members were there um, at those sessions, hope so. Uh, we, throughout that process, we engaged over 600 participants, gathered like 53 pages of ideas on, you know, er, under better understanding the challenges that folks are facing in the forest sector and value added manufacturers specifically, um, and also what some of the potential of solutions were. And so we have all that information. We brought it all together. The partners worked together on developing kind of a phase one shared plan um, of the, the initial things that we wanted to work on uh, in order to try and meet the objective of growing value added and growing and supporting value added manufacturing. It's kind of three, three buckets of the work. One is, and not in any particular order, uh, business partnerships. So what do we do to help accelerate and support business partnerships between uh, licensees and value-added manufacturers? 
Secondly, increasing First Nations participations in the forest sector in general, and also specifically in value-added manufacturing. Third bucket is government actions, programs, and policies that can support all of that. Uh, and that plan is available to anyone, so maybe there's a way to make it available um, through your newsletter. And so what we're doing now, uh, we continue to meet every week, so we're getting to know each other really, really well. And I think those relationships in themselves are really going to help us be successful. But uh, one of the things coming up is a hosting a pilot regional fiber flow forum is what we're calling them. But this is the idea of regional tables. It's called Growing Roots in the Coots. And uh, it it's going to take place in Nelson on June 17th, and it's going to bring together primary sector participants, so mills, tenure holders, value-added manufacturers, First Nations, to look at business opportunities in the Kootenai region and what, what can be done locally to keep more of that fibre in the local region supporting local businesses. So we're really hoping that that can become a model for what we might be able to do in other parts of the province. Well, that's that's a great start. Uh, I'm I, I'm obviously aware of that, but it's um, I think a, a good starting point for us. Uh, Vi, you had a couple of other questions you, yeah. you wanted to. Yes. So the next question that I have for Rachel is: So, Rachel, what is your main message to the folks in the forest sector and in the value-added manufacturing that are feeling like uh, anxious about their future, pessimistic, like pessimistic about their future? So, what is your main message to those guys? Yeah, thanks for that. I know it feels really challenging right now. I mean, we're seeing we're seeing mills curtailing, we're seeing mills closing, we're seeing impacts on communities. And I have talked to so many people over the last year and a bit that I've been in this role. Um, I I know there's challenges out there, and I know that change is hard to navigate. Um, my so my message is that. You know, I'm a very optimistic person and I really believe that that's not blind optimism. There's a lot of things happening in the sector right now that will be positive for the future of the sector. Uh, we just need to get through this transition period and there's supports to help people do that. You know, we some of those things we have investments in forest planning and practices you know anytime you want me to come and talk more about some of those other things i'd be happy to but those investments are going to build clarity and confidence in a sustainable timber supply and the raw materials that we need to support uh, wood manufacturing now and into the future. And this work is being done in partnership with First Nations. We're becoming more active in the sector, looking to become full partners. And that is also going to provide clarity, confidence, and, and security for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, you know, there's that, the initiative, some of the initiatives that I just talked to you about, like the government programs are really making sure that, um, we have the support to help businesses transition to, we're going to be doing things different. We have different wood supply. We're going to be cutting less trees, making sure that we're making, respecting our forests and the resource by making the highest and best use, adding as much margin, value, investment jobs, all of that, that we can for the trees we harvest. We're seeing real progress in that. And I, I'm just really optimistic that by working together in the way that we have been and with other partners that we're going to get to that place. Um, I think we're going to look back in a few years and say, wow, everything changed then and we're in a better place now. And, and my team and the work of all the people we work with across the ministry, across other ministries, we're here to support um, businesses and communities uh, to do that work. Nice. Thank you for that. Yeah. So you talked about like so many programs available for the forest sector and the value added manufacturing and uh, funding available. So how can people get involved? What are the next steps for people to get involved and take like advantage of this much, like these opportunities available? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we want to come talk to us. There, There's my message. Uh, you mm -hmm. can email us. I think we sent you our email, but you can get in touch with me directly or you can get in touch with my team. Our email is forest.policy at gov.bc.ca. We can get you involved with the accelerator work, add you to our distribution list. You can come provide input on the work that we're doing and get involved in sort of future sessions. Um, we can connect you, help you see, you know, learn more about the funding, I'm pointing at all the funding opportunities behind me. Uh, we can help connect you and give you more information on those. Um, and you can become a member of any of the groups that are partners in the value added manufacturers. So, you know, the value added wood coalition, the ILMA, the IWPA, BC Wood as a great way of getting involved and having your voice be part of the work, but also be in the loop about the 
contact okay. us. So Correct. that's the thing. If I'm in my, if I'm a part of the forest sector, the first thing I should do is reach out to you. Yes. All Absolutely. right. That's good to know. Okay, I think that's that's all the questions I have. Brian, do you have anything else? Um, is there anything else on the horizon for the value added accelerators? Yes, there is. We're really excited uh, to be going back to BC Woods Global Buyers Mission uh, in early September. So um, we sort of kicked off the accelerators that time last year publicly with an open house, which we think went really well. It was awesome to have a room full of value added manufacturers and forest, you know, forest licensees talking about forestry. And so we're going to do it again more this year. Uh, the partners are want to do another open house. So we're looking forward to that and probably will be advertising through your newsletter for opportunities for people to come together. But this year we also have the idea of having kind of a shared booth with all the partners. Um, as a way of really communicating the good work that's happening in British Columbia in the forest sector in general and around supporting value-added wood manufacturing. And I think we've talked about uh, also the opportunity to use some other workshoppy things at the same time to support our goals of growing value-added manufacturing as part of lifting the entire forest sector up in the province. Great. Oh, awesome. That's great news. Good. 